Um, hello, everyone. I'm Yu Hao Li from Columbia University. I'm very excited to be here to talk about our recent work on tight incentive analysis on CPU attacks to market equilibrium of resource exchange over general networks. And this is a joint work with Yu Kuncheng, Xiao Tiedeng, and Xiang Yan. Um, so let's consider a resource sharing system over a P2P network and with only one type of good. So this resource sharing system can be modeled as an undirected graph G, which vertex uh, represents a peer or player in this system. And WV means the amount of divisible resources that agent V owns. And we use gamma V to represent the neighbor of an agent V. So because it's a P2P network, the resource ex exchange can only happen between uh, two agents that's a, uh, that's a neighbor of each other. So we use X to represent the, the whole resource allocation. And as you can see, every X V U, so here V and U should be an H of this network. Um, this kind of resource sharing system was motivated by the upload, upload bandwidth exchange in BitTorrent. So imagine that some users want to download a big file from the server, then it might require the server has a huge amount of uh, upload bandwidth. Um, however, the BitTorrent says, okay, we, we can divide the file into some small pieces. And um, whenever some users uh, download uh, some pieces from, uh, from the server, it, uh, they can use their upload bandwidth to, uh, to, upload it, to upload these pieces to let others to download um, these pieces. So the peers that, um, down, uh, that uh, benefit from the BitTorrent should also contribute his upload bandwidth. bandwidth. So it's basically a, a resource sharing or upload bandwidth ex, uh, exchange system uh, of a BitTorrent. And in the rest of the talk, let's, let's just assume um, we, are, we are looking at a general resource sharing model. So uh, naturally, this bandwidth resource sharing can be modeled as a pure exchange economy, which is a special special kind of aerodebra market. And uh, in, in this kind of market, every player sells its own goods to its neighbors. And every player is also a buyer of goods from its neighbors. So the utility of each player is just defined as the total resource it received. Uh, it's a, so it's a linear <coughs> function. Um, as you can imagine, the agents may prefer to send resources to peers that send resources back to them. So it's a, it's a roughly tit for tight exchange scheme, which encourages uh, fair trading. So naturally, Wu and Zhang in <clears throat> 27 um, proposed a proportional response dynamics of this uh, resource sharing model. So at, at time zero, every agent just uniformly sells um, its, uh, send its goods to its neighbors. And uh, after that, at each time t plus one, the resource that agent V sends to U is proportional to what, uh, v sends, uh, what U sends to V over the total resource V received. So that's why it's called proportional response dynamics. And uh, they proved that this proportional response dy dynamics converges and also it, and it uh, further converges to a market equilibrium. So let's, let's quickly go through the market equilibrium, which is an important notion for characterizing efficient allocations in exchange economies. So market equilibrium uh, includes two parts, the price vector of the goods and uh, the allocation X. And the P and X should satisfy the market clearance <clears throat> budget constraint and individual optimality. So we can get an uh, allocation from, the, from a market equilibrium. OK, um, recall that the proportional response dynamics converges to a market equilibrium. And let's use this example to illustrate uh, its corresponding proportional response allocation. So let's look at the agent V um, uh, in the left, left, left top corner. So it has three union of uh, three union amount of resources, and uh, U three send five units to to V, and U two send four union to V. So the total total utility of V is nine, 
and uh, because U3 sent five to it, so by proportional, uh, it it uh, we will send um, five over nine fraction of its own resources, which is you know five over three to U3, and such a prop, uh, proportional property holds for every agent uh, and is uh, and every its neighbor in this system. So. Previous works uh, basically study the fairness and efficiency of this model, and our work focuses on uh, the robustness, uh, which studies the uh, strategic behavior uh, of this market equilibrium. So because it's a P2P network, um, every agent has some private information, for example, the neighborhood of each agent and its weight. So potentially, there could be some cheating method for a strategic agent. For example, a, an agent can uh, remove some edges connected to itself. So here, the requirement of connected is uh, it's important because it's, it's a P2P network. And the other way is to uh, misreport its weight. And we also, uh, our work mainly focuses on the CPU tax strategy. Uh, which is a much more complicated strategy, and uh, I will give the definition later. So uh, let me introduce some past, past uh, theorems to show what's going on about the analysis of strategic behaviors. So let's use the, the original example, and the agent V may delete some its own edges. For example, it delays this edge, then there's a new network and a new market uh, equilibrium allocation. So under this, under this new network, the agent V can get five, <clears throat> get five unions of resources, which is you know, lower than its original uh, uh, utility. And the other way is to misreport the, the weight of V uh, from three to one. And also it can only get five unions of resources, which is lower than previous. And the other way to to cheat, to cheat is that a agent V delete this edge. Um, then in this new network, he, uh, it can get nine unions, which which is the same as before. So this two theorem says um, uh, the proportional ma response mechanism is actually truthful for strategy proofness um, for the edge deleting strategy and weight misreporting strategy. Um, However, uh, let, let, let's consider what happens in CPU attacks. So the CPU attack is a, great, uh, is a grips rate of P2P systems, and it creates a large number of uh, fictitious identity, uh, identities and use them to gain a large influence. So we model the CPU attack strategy uh, as follows. So a, a, a strategic agent can split itself into several fictitious nodes. There is no limitation on the number of, of fictitious nodes, but there is some limitation of the amount of resources because it, can, uh, it cannot you know, create new resources. So after, after, split, after splitting, uh, he can connect every fictitious node to a subset of its original neighbors and assign the, uh, his original uh, resources to this um, fictitious nodes. So as you can see, there could be a new um, network with a new market equilibrium allocation, so he, he can has a new uh, utility. And in this example, if we split itself into V1 and V2 and uh, allocate epsilon on V1 and 3 minus epsilon on V2, then uh, it can get roughly 11 minus epsilon um, many utility, So which is actually higher than before. So this means uh, the proportional response mechanism is not strategy proof against CPU attack. However, we, we continue to ask, um, can we characterize the extent to which a player's utility can be increased by such a strategy behavior? So we can view it as you know, approximate truthfulness or it's called incentive ratio. So the incentive ratio was proposed by Chen Deng and Zhang in 2011. And uh, let's look at its, um, its definition and, and the other model, although it's a, a general definition. So the incentive ratio and the other model is that 
uh, if if an agent V wants to play a CPU attack, it can CPU, uh, it can split itself into M fictitious nodes. <clears throat> the only requirement is M is at least one, and then it can um, allocate its original resources uh, W V to to all these fictitious nodes as long as the summation is not uh, does not exceed the original resources, and also after splitting there is a new network G prime. So the, the ratio is defined as the new utility uh, over the original utility when he plays truthfully. And we also define you know, the general incentive ratio as um, uh, all possible cases, with, which includes all possible networks and uh, potential uh, strategy agent V and the uh, weight profile W. So this is defined as the worst case of you know, incentive ratio. And uh, we know that it's not truthful, so the incentive ratio is, is not going to be one. If it's one, then it's truthful. Uh, our theorem says uh, the incentive ratio of proportional response time, uh, mechanism for CPU attack is exactly two over general networks. So there is a concrete example where, um, where uh, agent V can use CPU attack to get arbitrarily uh, twice times uh, twice utility compared to its original utility. And our main techniques uh, are applied for the for the upper bounds of two, which means for for every case the agent cannot um, get uh, the agent can get at most twice of its um, um, original utility. So yeah, so let's quickly review it. Review the decision making of the CPU attack uh, about the techniques to prove such an upper bound. Um, so when when an agent wants to use CPU attack, it it can make several decisions. For example, how many copy copy nodes does it split into, and how to how to build the connections and how to assign its own weight to to these you know fictitious nodes. And our first lemma says. Uh, we can reduce we, we can reduce some of the strategy space to uh, we, we can simplify some of the strategy space. So suppose we have a, a network with market equilibrium allocation, and we consider a special uh, case of the uh, CPU attack, which is uh, it split itself into two fictitious nodes, and the uh, the important thing here is to keep the allocation as the same as before. And then we can prove the new network is, is also a market equilibrium. And this lemma says, uh, suppose we have a you know op optimal CPU attack with some fictitious nodes <clears throat> uh, having more than de uh, have degree more than one. Then we can use the resource reserve binary split to split to split such a node, and uh, the utility remains unchanged. So which means uh, we can actually um, reduce the optimal splitting to so to this kind of simple way, where every uh, where every fictitious node has only degree one. And then, um, so uh, after we have this structure, um, we uh, the only way to you know find the optimal CPU attack is to uh, find the you know optimal weight assignment over these fictitious nodes. And we design a um, complicated techniques for the whole procedure. And let me quickly introduce it. So we first use resource reserve binary split to to get a CPU network with the optimal structure. So the so the structure is here, and uh, um, then we want to increase some some this weight to the ultimate you know arbitrary ultimate assignment and decrease some some of them. Then we want to uh, then we characterize how the market equilibrium changes when there is one agent changing its weight. And the third item says we uh, characterize the change of utilities of a subset of vertices when there is one agent ch changing its weight. So uh, the reason is that uh, when, for example, when we decrease the weight of this node. Um, uh, the, what we care about is the total utility of this the subset of these fictitious nodes. 
And finally, we carefully design an order to increase and decrease the weights of these fictitious nodes to an arbitrary um, ultimate assignment to get the upper bound of two. So potentially, we can have some more elegant way to, you know, to, to, to give the proof. Um, for example, uh, use some combinatorial algorithms uh, for the market equilibrium or uh, potential design some potential functions. But the annoying thing is that um, the, 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 net, the structure of network has been changed. OK, let me uh, end up uh, at some future works. So we post the problem of analyzing strategy behavior as tantalizing goal for the future work. So for example, um, we have proved the incentive ratio is upper bounded by a constant in this kind of market equilibrium. And we also know, we also, uh, know some uh, other results like Fisher markets with uh, classic utility functions. And the question is, can we, um, can we extend these results to other market equilibriums? And the second one is to, uh, can we apply the incentive ratio or approximate truthfulness to other scenarios when consider strategy behaviors? And the most important one is the third. So uh, when we consider some mechanisms the, um, uh, that are not strategy proof to, to some uh, strategic behaviors, um, we cannot stop at here say, okay, it's not you know, incentive compatible and it's bad. But we need to, to study um, when there is some agent can manipulating or adopt some strategic behaviors, uh, what happened in this system. And the most important thing is what equilibrium could be achieved when all agents are manipulating. And I will stop, stop at here. Thanks. If I understand the BitTorrent network correctly, I would assume that the node knows its own neighbors but doesn't know the structure of the whole uh, network. So actually, while you study full information, you could imagine like a partial information setting, and then maybe the incentive ratio result would be useful to show that actually you do have incentive compatibility because you would uh, have to you only have the partial information. You can have types over the um, full information, the possible uh, like Bayesian information or full information, and then um, because you have a bounded uh, benefit, and maybe you have an unbounded or uh, you can hurt yourself when you're doing an attack, then maybe somehow uh, the reason is not complicated. So I was just wondering if you looked into it also. Oh right, so. Um, when we consider the you know the decentral, decentralized version, or so an agent can only have some partial information, and uh, yeah, so so our worst case considers you know the complete information when when it um, uses the CPU tax, but uh, uh, if we, uh, if if the agent is allowed to uh, connect to you know new neighbors, then for the original. Uh, for the original nodes, it can also connect to the new neighbors. So, and the, the answer to your question, I think, is if it can really connect to new neighbors, then the incentive ratio can be unbounded. Or, or for the age deleting strategy, it is not. Or if if it can add some edges, then it's no longer to be truthful. But it's uh, it's not bad because you know the if the P2P network is more. The connectivity of the P2P network is uh, is increasing. Then, um, then it's not it's not a bad thing. I think. Any other questions? Uh, one question. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I'm just wondering that can I get some uh, information that uh, intuition that why uh, you split and you can get some more uh, reward. Like I, I saw your example, like in your example, uh, you split and uh, the graph has, uh, is divided into two parts. So is the connectivity 
um, influence that. I, I, I want to have more information about that. Okay, interesting questions. Thanks. So, so my question is like the uh, even though after splitting the network is not uh, is is still connected, um, the, uh, is is not truthful. But the intuition that why this works, I think, is like so after splitting, um, these two fic this fictitious nodes can um, have different press can set up the different presses of these nodes. And then, you know, it can uh, in the market equilibrium. But previously, the only the node uh, can only have one kind of price. So this is somehow an intuition. But um, there could be others, like from combinatorial um, view. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank